Hi everyone, this is Maddie, one of the naturalists here at Gulf Branch Nature Center located in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, we are part of Arlington County's Department of Parks and Recreation and I'm here this week to bring you this week's five minute find. We have been finding a ton of monarch butterfly caterpillars outdoors lately and so I thought I would bring a few inside and share them with you and explain what makes monarch butterflies so special. Monarch butterflies are native to our area and they have a really fascinating and unique multi-generational migration that they take along the East Coast. So um, monarch butterflies as adults will overwinter in the Oyomal forests in Mexico and then successive generations of monarch butterflies will make their journey northwards during the spring and the summer, some even making it as far as Canada. The adult monarch butterflies that we are finding here in Arlington at this time of year are likely the last generation that's going to move northwards. They will lay eggs and like all butterflies do, those eggs will go through a pretty unique life cycle, right? The eggs will hatch and caterpillars will emerge who will eat, 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 eat. Um, monarch butterfly caterpillars eat exclusively uh, plants in the milkweed family because milkweed um, has uh, toxins in its sap that actually accumulate in the caterpillar's body. It doesn't harm the caterpillar, but does make them really unappetizing and unpalatable to birds that otherwise might like to gobble up a caterpillar. So um, birds have learned, right, that monarch caterpillars are not so great for eating. So those caterpillars, again, are gonna eat, 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 eat. Um, move on to the next stage of their life cycle where they are chrysalises and then emerge from those chrysalises as adult monarch butterflies. Uh, the caterpillars that are here in Arlington at this time of year are the generation that is going to return south to Mexico for the winter and they'll make that journey without ever having done it before. So it's pretty incredible. It's just in their DNA to know where to go for the winter time. All right, let's take a look at some caterpillars. All right, so we've got the camera moved around and our caterpillars are mostly in focus, so we're gonna take a look at them. Um, on the top here, we have a young monarch caterpillar. This caterpillar hatched or emerged from its egg just a few days ago, and you can see it's been busy eating this swamp milkweed leaf. Um, we would say that this little caterpillar is in what we call its second instar. So it's grown enough that it has sort of shed its first exoskeleton and is busy continuing to grow here. Um, over down here on the bottom, we have a much larger monarch caterpillar that's a little bit older hanging out on this common milkweed leaf. And we would say that this caterpillar is um, likely in its fifth instar. So it's shed its exoskeleton a few times as it's grown, right? Remember it eats, 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 eats. That's its job as a caterpillar is just to grow and get bigger. And it has certainly done that. Um, when this caterpillar is ready, it will um, climb to a location that feels sort of safe and secure and sort of spin a little bit of silk and suspend itself from that little bit of silk, whether it's from the underside of a leaf or the side of a, a brick wall, right? Anywhere that it feels safe and sort of hidden. And it will suspend itself from that little bit of silk and then uh, become a chrysalis. So it will um, shed its last caterpillar exoskeleton for the last time. And what emerges from underneath is the, the caterpillar in chrysalis form. So it's a little different than a moth in a cocoon where the caterpillar is not inside the chrysalis. It actually really becomes the chrysalis. So give me a second to move the camera again and I will show you um, a chrysalis as well. So here is our monarch butterfly chrysalis. I did um, take one caterpillar that I found outdoors and bring it indoors and kept it in a bug jar. I fed it tons of milkweed and it grew and grew and grew and grew. And um, it then uh, crawled to the top of the little jar, spun its little silk pad, suspended itself from that silk pad, shed its last caterpillar exoskeleton and became a chrysalis. And that's what we're seeing here, right? Monarch chrysalises have this uh, beautiful light pale green color with little flecks of gold and black. They're really very beautiful um, and they can be tough to find outdoors because they typically are very well camouflaged, right? If this little chrysalis was hung on the underside of a leaf, it would be uh, pretty difficult to spot and see. In about two weeks, uh, the, the um, 
adult butterfly will emerge from this chrysalis. So again, it's going to shed that chrysalis exoskeleton and And what will emerge will be the adult butterfly. And again, the caterpillars that are here in Arlington right now, they are the generation that is going to return south for the winter. Um, so they will emerge, they will um, drink a ton of nectar from plants like asters and goldenrods, right? As adults, butterflies don't eat leaves anymore. They're typically um, nectar drinkers. So it's going to collect nectar from flowers and prepare itself for that journey and then head southwards in time for the winter. Don't worry everyone, we will make sure that that chrysalis finds its way outside so our uh, butterfly when it emerges will have plenty of nectar to drink and will be able to make its journey southwards. If you'd like to um, do a little bit to help monarch butterflies, uh, we definitely encourage you to plant native plants like milkweed so the caterpillars have something to eat out there. But other late fall flowers are really important. Again, our asters and our goldenrods that are flowering at this time of year so those adult monarch butterflies have something to eat before and during their long journey southwards. Thanks so much for joining me today for our five minute find. Uh, if you have questions about monarch butterflies, we certainly encourage you to reach out to us at the Nature Center or do a little research on your own. And hopefully we'll see you next week for our next five minute find. Take care.